on the wheel over here and um, I could throw a mug or whatever and I was going to decorate a bowl in my way with lots of low relief and then um, talk about glazing and what that looks like and um, talk about firing upside down which is hilarious to me. I love doing that. And, um, and if possible, I've got a lot planned. I like to cram a lot into 30 or 45 minutes and then, um, you know, maybe assemble, assemble like a two part mug, assemble some stuff, make some, make a handle. Cause it's also, I make my handles. Some people pull their handles. I make mine on molds with a roller. So we'll do that in a minute. So I'm gonna switch to the pottery wheel, Carla. Okay. So this here, let's see, um, later. Okay. All right, so I don't know if everybody knows what a treadle pottery wheel is. I'm gonna take this out. Hopefully I don't hang up on everybody with this. So this, let me get back here is what it looks like. It's a wooden thing like that. Sorry if it's like the Blair Witch Project, but um, it is foot powered. It's really fun. And when I wiggle a stick, I didn't wear my best shoes. The pottery wheel turns. So anyway, that's what that is. A lot of potters like them. I'll show you why I like it. It has some really nice properties, which are you can move it with your feet and your hands can fiddle with things. So that's kind of nice. And you can go, it looks like you can go backwards and forwards. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It goes whatever direction you're doing, you're kicking. It's designed for um, going counterclockwise com more comfortably, maybe, because the foot pedal action is always on the left. And I don't know if there's an advantage. I've never seen it on the right. So I don't know. Anyway, um, so this, what I have here is a clay mold with texture in it. And this is bisque to, if you, uh, you wanna talk shop for a minute, it's bisque to 08. It's bisque really low so that it's really porous and behaves like plaster. So it releases really quickly. So, um, so I just rolled an ordinary slab of clay with a rolling pin and I laid it in here and I'm going to pick this clay off and I'll just talk pretty fast. If, uh, if y'all have any questions, smack it right on into the chat and Carla's going to tell me, you know, tell me because I can't look up and read the chat right now. Um, so um, this is low fire clay. It's a low fire white clay sort of like school children play, I like to call it. And um, I am, because of my mold, my molds don't have a bottom in them at all. And so I am sort of, I'm making a nice curve because we all know we want our bowls to have a beautiful parabola because when we put our delicious, our, our, our potatoes in there or whatever, uh, we want our spoon to, to scrape across something really smooth and not super angular. The ex there are plenty of exceptions to that, but I, I kind of like it as a basis on which to think about making a bowl. So now I'm smearing that in. I, I also collect um, old timey Texas pottery and, uh, and then I have some milk bowls that are like flat and then they go up like a flower pot. And I love those too, so I'm not gonna lie like, you know. Okay, so I also got conveniently prepared myself a coil like a one inch thick rope of clay to go around the edge of this thing and I'm just mashing it on there. So you might be wondering to yourself, why does she even bother? Like, can't she just throw a bowl? Does she need a mold? I can throw a bowl um, and I've thrown many a bowl uh, without a mold. However, what I really love about throwing uh, in a mold is that I get like the embossing texture Sort of like um, when I would troop around in like the Metropolitan Museum or the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, the uh, Roman pottery is oftentimes thrown in molds 
and it's it's meant to look like embossed gold or silver it's it's like embossed metal and it's really really beautiful to me i'm a big fan of low relief and um and trying to uh you know recreate some of that some of that glory and grandeur okay so this is a um oh you might be wondering what is she sticking her her uh mold on the wheel with this is uh one of those you all might have one of these it's for trimming it's a giffen grip and um i don't use it for trimming but i do use it for holding a mold it's a really handy tool for that some of my molds aren't even round they're like i don't know kind of ovally but it's still like it holds the mold and spins it around so that i can um so that i can emboss my the bottom outside of my clay on that. Okay, so, and now I am throwing, the other fun thing about the rope of clay that I put around the top is that it's slightly uneven, and I welcome this. I could use a tool like this and just cut off the uneven part, but I, I really, I like it. To me, it looks like the way a jellyfish has grown up and out a little bit. And so you're going to see like lots of this um, interesting uneven quality here. Or to me, interesting, maybe annoying to some, but I like it. I'm just getting, hmm, trying to get my parabola gone, going. All right, there we are. So um, also uh, in doing low fire, um, it's, if I feel like it's really important to build color layers. Um, and some of the colors, so I need to start with uh, on go, which is colored clay for decorating. It's like clay with ceramic pigment in it. And so I'm gonna put a little bit in there while I'm spinning. I'm gonna put a little bit out here. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I can, I have a bunch of nice colors, but right now I, I like the sort of sunset colors of red and yellow. Trailing those around. I don't know if y'all can hear my dogs, they're overreacting to something. They're banished, but you can still hear them. All right, and so sometimes I just like to do a little bit of finger painting, kind of, I've got some fast um, sort of aesthetics going on and then a little bit of slow work, which is nice, mushing this stuff around. The other thing that you need to always look for in my work right now is um, I make lots of holes in things. And so I pierce it with my thumb and forefinger and it makes these uh, little, like a little larger than a sesame seed kind of holes. And then the glaze, like the turquoise glaze or the clear glaze will catch in there and then it's like a stained glass window. And it's something I learned from uh, looking at like, I don't know. Hey Lisa, um, so Joe's asking pieces what- In a museum or in a book. Can you hear me? Joe's asking um, what clay body are you currently using? I make it and it's a low fire white, but I make it in a clay mixer right over there. Gotcha. So what, it, what are the ingredients? I have talc and ball clay and whiting and silica in it. Gotcha. So it's basically school, school clay. Like if your kids are offered clay in their classroom, it's usually this one. All right. Can you see, I just can't quit fussing with it. Giving it a massage. Okay, so I just peeled it off. Okay. Um, should I make a cup? Sure. Okay. They're going to do that just because, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, we want to see. Okay. It. All right. It'll be a little one, kind of a little one. Um, okay. And then I can decorate and assemble these things. All right. Some people think that they don't like a foot powered wheel because it might get too tiring or their leg might get tired. I've never noticed if my leg got tired. So I don't think that's a thing. Any other questions? I have one. Does it matter if you, if you go fast or slow? Does it make a difference in your form? Um, if you go slower, you get more expression. Okay. Lisa, it's Ellen. I'm drinking coffee out of one of your one of oh. my favorite cups of yours. Yay! <laughs> I had tea upstairs, but I forgot to bring it down right before this. I was like, oh, I think I have everything. I forgot my tea cup. <laughs> so right now you can see there's lots of expression in this. Not necessarily the kind I want. So I'm most interested right now in forms that, uh, that are sort of tall and attenuated and have this interesting little waistline. So I have an uneven top. I'm gonna do something with that right now. Um, let's see. The uneven part, so it's a little high on one side and a little low on this side. So uh, there's, um, when I was learning, um, one of the first workshops I ever took was from uh, this guy named Ken Ferguson, who was an icon at the Kansas City Art Institute and in the clay world in general. And, um, and something he said, I think I was really impressionable in the 80s and when I was a beginner. And, um, and he said, um, quit looking at each other. Don't, don't, don't make work like each other. Um, but uh, like discontinue your your um, subscription is to Ceramics Monthly, which I did do at the time, but I don't, I wouldn't do that now, of course. But, um, but his point was, um, go and look at the historic ceramic works. Don't look at, um, at, the, at each other so much. Don't look at contemporary, other contemporary ceramics. Okay, so uh, one of the things I fell in love with was this odd pot called a monk's cap pitcher. I believe it's a pitcher or a ewer. I don't know. It's Chinese. It's hard to even tell the scale. Maybe it's this big. Maybe it's this big. Maybe it's that big. I don't know. But anyway, it has this thing in the back where, and that's where I want my handle to go. And then I'm going to stamp it um, right there. Zoom is pesky. It's always like, hey, do you want to turn this microphone on? No. going to cause an echo. Okay, so I did my pinching before. Oh, I rather like this one. I kind of like when there's a little body and a big top. It's almost like an owl as well as a monk's cap. This is why I never get sick of making mugs ever because something new is always revealing itself in the form on the wheel. It's like each dancer looks different doing the same dance or something. Okay, so now here is something really unique to me, or maybe not to me only, but a lot of a lot of artists. But if you are going to run to glaze with a drippy glaze, you need a way to deal with it when it goes and wants to stick to the bottom of your pot. So uh, the bottom of your cup. So what I do is I'm making a channel down here, and it's taken me a long time to figure out something good to do. But um, I uh, here it comes. a little shadow under the pot and then now I have this wonderful drip catcher so my glaze can all fall in there and I'm ruffling it a lot like the uh like some medieval Jacobicons the German Siegberg two-part really tall and skinny they look like a bowling pin um pots 
anyway, so then my glaze, I've kind of got it to where those, those little bottom things are not too big, not too small. They're just right. And then I'm going to poke a bunch of holes in here so that when you lift it up and drink, you get mm, a whole lot of stained glass glory when you do that. And I'm going to do that with you all in just a second. Is everybody getting what you want so far out of this? Like, are these the, is uh, making some stuff, is that like what we're, what a good, a good way to spend this visit is? Did that, was that a sentence? Yeah, let us, let us know in the chat. All right. Stephanie said, yes, good. Yes. I like this cup. All right. Now, if we're gonna, we should go over here and make some stuff. Assemble, let's assemble. So I'm gonna move my camera from the wheel. Mm -hmm. To there. Okay. Maybe like that, is that better? I don't know if that's crooked or straight. It looks crooked, but maybe it's it looks, straight. It looks pretty straight, Lisa. Okay. Anyway, there we go. All right, lots of shadows. Um, should we go ahead and, since we were just making a cup, should we assemble a cup? Sure. Okay, cool. I'm into it. All right, so uh, when I cut my stuff off, I like to use a wavy wire like this one. Can you see it's wavy? Yes. Um, and so I got this little cup here. And so that's the wavy bottom that I got right there. And um, when it's finished, therefore, because it's low fire, I'm gonna glaze the whole thing. And, um, and so one of my little tricks that if, I swear, I mean, these, these solutions seem so obvious now, but back when I was first figuring all this out, it wasn't, and I was doing way too much grinding, but um, I fire using these, and you can see they have glaze all over them because I reuse them a lot, and I use, I make my own stilts out of Hershey Kiss out of clay, and uh, this is uh, the highest fire uh, welding rod. And I just go in there and say, I need something like a thick coat hanger. And then I have three of them. And um, this sparkly glaze that I have on the bottom down here, which is an aventurine crystalline glaze. And I would love to talk shop about that if you want to know about it. Um, and uh, I use, I have two buckets of it. One that's regular thick for this area and then one that's thinned out for this area right here. And so it, this isn't gonna drip, but it's gonna sparkle in the little lines, which I love. And then these little things, these little, I like to call them kisses, because they're kisses, they're Hershey kisses. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but they stand, uh, this cup can stand on this and, and look, check out the glaze dripped right into that foot really well. Anyway. So there's that. Oh, and um, and I showed you that I that I have um, I poke lots of holes in my pots. So I'm going to talk about that before I forget. Just going to go through my list. So when I photo, I use a bike light in my cups because when you drink, you know, if you're drinking, you can you can actually see like that's what I'm talking about. There's no clay there. And the glaze is really, really unctuous, like a glaze like Deb's Clear. That one is very fluid and spreads out really thinly, really nicely. It's a gorgeous glaze, but it does not work to do this. But, um, but my uh, Lisa's Crackle Free Clear that's on my glaze sheet, that one does. And so I use these. You can see there's the, an animal that's running right there. You can see that's his little head. Unless there's his little tail and some, sort of like a deer. And this is an homage to all of the, I mean, there's so many historic um, types of wares that feature a deer. So here we go. So there's lots of light in these cups and um, little um, 
tumblers, I guess that's what that is. So I like them when I when they sit on the side, uh, you know, when they sit on a table and the sun suddenly sets and then it, it shines through that. Or if I'm watching TV and then one of like the candlelight sparkles through this as I'm holding it, I just love it. So I don't know if it's a party trick or not, but I, I really enjoy it. So. Okay. So here's this little guy. And all I'm going to do is thumb this here. And I have a little signature stamp right there. You can see my initials. I'm going to sign it. That's very good. Come on. Okay. Um, and then on this one, I didn't put the, um, what do you call it? Like the little nod to the um, Chinese monk's cap pot. So maybe I still will. Just maybe I will. Just take me a second. I don't on all of them. I just do on some. Mostly I do. Sometimes my mind drifts. As one's mind will in one studio. Okay, there's a little sort of a stamp thing. Okay. All right. Can y'all see that very well? Not super well. What What did you just do? Cord. I don't think I can zoom in a little bit with the zoom. Um, okay. I. There you go. Cord that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, now I'm just going to get a little slug of clay. How am I doing for time, Carla? You're doing great. Um, you have about 20 more minutes. Perfect. My trusty guard dogs. Come in. I'm giving a presentation, but come in. Oh, I think it's up in the closet. Come on in. Uh, no, the cameras aren't pointed over there. Here, can you come in that one and come right there? Okay. Um, let's see. I love that my studio is wide open to the world. <laughs> I never even shut my doors, much less lock it. Okay, so can you all see what I'm doing here? I have, so I have two pieces of bisque clay that I showed you before. I put a little slug of clay on there. I didn't really explain this. I put a little extra bit of clay, like a little baby clay on top of this large piece of clay. And, okay, there we go. I'm gonna do this. And so now it looks like that. And so if I peel this over, do you see? Yeah. So it sort of wants to be a little extra je ne sais quoi with the uh, cup. But I'm not done yet. Okay. So I'm going to turn this. I kind of like the shape of whoop, woo, woo. And um, yeah, like that. And then this is, um, I, I like the little line under there. I don't know. I just, 
Uh, my, I think my handles look complicated, but I care very much. I'm still doing the first assignment, the first mug assignment I ever got in the first pottery class, which was make a cup that considers how it feels in the, on the finger, on the hand. And um, I am still doing that assignment every day. Okay, so now we get to colored slip. I have purple and light blue, like tur turquoise. Y'all are quiet. Yeah, well, Ellen says anybody's got any interesting. Ellen says um, that's a, a brilliant way to make a handle. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I always found pulling handles right. was just such a stupid exercise. That is brilliant. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't like pulling handles because my the water runs all the way down your your elbows. Yeah, you know, kind of. Gets you all wet. Um, I used to wear like, remember tennis bracelets from the 70s? I used <laughs> to have my parents' old tennis bracelets. Terry cloth tennis bracelets. Anyway, okay. So there's that. It's coming, coming to be. Okay, so this is so much like that. It'll be nice to attend a real workshop in person someday. I still do it. I love doing it. I haven't done it in a long time. The last one I took was Paul Seldner and June Kaniko. It was epic. Well, when was that? Um, it might have been a decade ago now. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm, I don't know, it might have only been five years ago. I can't remember. There was one time when I was there and I was like, oh my God, I'm changing my flight. I'm taking this workshop. Okay, so now it's time to poke some holes with another tool. Ta-da, this is really neat. It's from China Clay Art Company. And look, it's like a little piece of metal and you can make little little squares in things really easily. Because um, I think it's really fun when you, I don't know, I just think it's fun to get a blast of twinkly turquoise light. I uh, one time, you know, I was, uh, we don't live near you know, Chartres and some of the great cathedrals with amazing stained glass. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're there, it's pretty mind blowing. This is my little bitty nod to that, my tiny tip of the hat to stained glass. And it's stained glaze, I guess. <laughs> Which is okay. pretty much glass. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much glass. You can see it. All right, should we decorate it? Say yes. 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 All Joe, right. Joe has a question. He's, he's asking um, what piece of pottery or time period of pottery ceramics has influenced your work the most? Um, I guess the most would be um, Tang Dynasty pottery because that got me started with low fire. Um, so seventh, century AD Chinese green like sansai ware that tricolor ware that's white and green and yellow like the horses with the dripping glazes and there's also vessels and they were intended to be very showy and um, um, let's see here they were intended to be showy because they were paraded at like funer funerary events funeral events and then buried. So, um, so they were intended to be seen from a distance because normally Chinese taste ran to things very subtle, like glazes that look like jade or something. Um, or white. Did you what, what time period? 
no, what did you just spray on there? Oh, oh. So that's actually, it would be water in a normal studio or water with vinegar. Mine is special secret water that has damp rid in it. So um, damp rid is calcium ugh, chloride. Somebody who knows, it's the, um, it's the non-toxic driveway melt. And when we had our snowstorm recently, I got my damp rid out and melted some of our snow with that. <laughs> it was really handy to have this in my studio. So what that does is it actually helps with uh, what I'm about to do now, which is I'm about to decorate um, with colored clay, uh, which is um, clay that, um, look at that, um, colored clay, uh, slip trailing, colored slip trails. There we go, I got it out, finally. And so this one, is I'm just encrusting it. Um, I'm always like seeking validation when I find historic types of pottery that have more is more. Like lately today on Pinterest, I found a whole bunch of Turkish pottery that was like amazing. And it was completely covered in colorful turquoise and red and uh, black flowers just all over it. Okay, I'm gonna put some sprigs on there. I've kept these, I've withheld information from you until now, but I'm going to put these sprigs, and these are little pieces of clay. I went ahead and pre-did these for y'all, so um, can y'all tell I have a chihuahua? <laughs> can you hear her? Anyway. So you just stamp those out, Lisa? I, I sort of, um, I'll show you, I mold them. I'm going to show you everything about the mold because it's really fun. And you two can do this with ease and alacrity. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to decorate this. Okay, so I'm going to put them on and kind of place them and show them. You know what I don't have is directional lights on that side. If anybody ever lets me do this again, I'll um, put, put a, spotlight over there because all the spotlights are here right okay so um i am let's see ooh, a flower so the potential is to tell a little story with all of these little uh additions that can be put on really easily. So you notice I'm sticking them in water. Um, oh, let me talk about the calcium chloride for a second. So what that does is it, is it uh, the driveway melt, which is some sort of uh, soluble salt, will help um, keep your, it, it makes your slip adhere. It makes it want to adhere better. And so that, I used to once in a while have like a a chunk of it falling off or something. I didn't like that. So anyway, there you go. So that's gonna be enough for now. Whoops, enough for now. It's hard to show you. I feel like it's shadowy, but you all get the point. Um, I'll put that right there. Because eventually when I glaze it, it's gonna be, I'm gonna do green on the sprigs. There's the purple shining through the turquoise. Um, and some on the inside as well, because I just can't leave any surface undecorated. It's just how I roll. So um, how sprigs are made, so this is where they start. They start on, the, on a board, like find a flat non-studio board, because studio boards have like that coating of dust on them. And, um, and then I use this stuff, which you can, you've got at the clay store and every hobby store called Plastilina. And you can see I chewed on the corner already. And there's different hardnesses and it's basically clay that never dries out. And you smash it onto this board. And then what I use is some sort of ballpoint pen um, to just carve, like I smash a big blob of it and then I carve around it with my pen. One that's ruined usually, um, one that's already ruined. 
And then this clay never dries. And I have like a library of it over there. I have a whole bunch of boards with this stuff on it. And then, let me get a glob of clay. I get an ordinary glob of clay and I flatten it out. Let's see, I flatten it out like that so that it has a nice flat surface that I can get a good embossment on. And then I have cornstarch that helps separate so that my clay doesn't just stick to my, uh, my design. So I put a little cornstarch out like that. Okay. Get some cornstarch on there. And then I pick a sprig and mash it on there really carefully. And then there is the negative of that. And I give it a little curve like that so that it can come out easily. And here's a sprig that's already been fired. And again, I bisque these extremely low temperature so that they release like plaster. So um, before there was a, a, handy, a handy bag of plaster uh, in history, there was the clay mold. Roman, Roman kiln sites are full of these things. They're everywhere. And they have all kinds of like dolphins and I don't know, satyrs and who, all kinds of silly things like that. So anyway, that's, that is sprigs. Do y'all have any question about that? If not, I will move ahead. How am I doing on time? You're doing good. You have about, yeah, about five more minutes. Um, can those sprigs be fired? Are they those... need to be fired to cone 08, so really low. That's a great question. Okay. Okay, here's a quiz. All What's right. in my spray bottle? Does anybody remember? Some, something you used to melt ice during the ice storm. Calcium yeah. carbonate. Yeah. Driveway melt, damp yeah. rid. We got a lot of we got a lot of correct answers. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, now I'm gonna draw in this bowl. And here's my goal, because I'm making this bowl as a present for my brother-in-law to give to a um Hey, uh, now, I, now I'm influenced by like uh, celebration, um, like commemorative wear. And so I'm thinking right now of English Staffordshire, like 1780s or whatever. Um, and mine is different from theirs, but they would write on theirs like Thomas Toft. So I wrote Tomton, which is the name of this rescue organization that, that takes care of um, like farm animals and stuff when they need a place to live out their lives. And I put their goats and cows and birds and ducks and this for this place for their fundraiser. So see, isn't that fun? Yeah. And so um, my brother-in-law. So basically, you know what's really interesting is like when when you when you really put a lot of decoration on something, I feel like yes, it can be a little cluttered and maybe it's not very zen or whatever, but it really is an expression of love. And and what for um, more like nature gives more is more like when you see a tree like I'm looking at an oak tree out there and it's got loads of pollen all over it and it came from one acorn and it's loaded with acorns nature is always abundantly flinging out these opportunities for life and so when I am when I'm making a bowl that's that's meant to hold the bounty of nature and help us survive and I want it to be the like a healthy garden color in action. And then it frames the food that you have in there that's like this healthy garden food. And I put animals in it because animals I've been learning um, are such a part of nature. It's not like nature is just like the plants, you know, it's um, animals, na nature and uh, like trees and uh, certain nuts, like squirrels are always, they are working, I swear to God. You know what, oak trees, I read this in a Michael Pollan book, oak trees have manipulated squirrels to get them to take their seeds somewhere else and plant them. And um, I just think that that is um, an exciting idea to chew on as I include animals in my nature bowls. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna draw an animal. And again, it's gonna be this deer shape and uh, my dog is my muse, one of my dogs, not my chihuahua. Uh, she's my muse for just being cute. But, um, but I have another dog that's um, sort of a bull terrier, blue healer looking thing. And um, she runs in a very hilarious way. And so this is, this looks like my dog when she's taking off running across the yard. According to my like, dog, it means what? to slowly start running. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure who that was. They said something. I am sorry. I did not have mute on. And whatever the stupid app on my phone is, decided to respond to that. Oh, how fun. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love technology. It's wild. Okay, so now I'm going to put some, some clouds in here. Some cloud forms and um, decorate the edges. And then add an insane gift of abundance and love for my brother-in-law an insane amount of animals and stuff like that on there. So. All right, I'm just drawing random stuff around this edge. And if I make a mistake, oh my God, my friend, um, I told my friend I felt bad, I made a mistake the other day. And actually I get really good when I make a mistake, I'm like, all right, well, what can I do with that in pottery? But she said, you know, just like in regular life, like if you make a mistake, you have to do a mistake dance. So that's my new favorite thing. It's like, oh, I made a mistake. Do dance, what's my mistake dance? <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna get, I have again, my favorite, one of my favorite motifs, the deer. There's a deer, see it's mm -hmm. running. It's missing a front leg. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna put a, put a little uh, piece of shrubbery that it's running behind while it's looking behind itself. So let's see, it can be rubbing, run, rubbing, running into this piece of shrubbery here. It's sort of like a combination of grapes and flowers. Judah yeah. wants to know how you became interested in illustration in creating your own drawings on your, on your work. Um, just by, just by looking at like the Roman ones and going, what the heck did they do that for? And it looks so cool, but why? And so um, I just researched it and figured it out. You know, they were um, doing, they were basically um, repeating the stuff on gold and silver pieces, which were, you know, like luxury items. And they would be, they would be anything from body tales to Roman gods in action doing something. And they were symbolic of something. Just like if you look at a, you know, an Easter bunny with a basket hiding something, you know, we all look at it. We all know what it means. <clears throat> in 2000 years, somebody might look at that and go, what is that rabbit carrying that basket for, you know? So we're at, um, we're at nice, like um, a dolphin, the Roman dolphin. What? We're a little over 45 minutes. Oh, we are? Yeah. Is it time to quit? It's, it's time, but if, if you want to keep showing and people want to keep watching, we can, we can finish up this. Well, um, is there any, um, so I basically am going to just add, look, a little goatee. Yeah. My sister has adopted all these goats. And um, they, they're like pets in their house and they're like so funny and they sit in your lap and everything. So there's a little goat. And um, some of my friends raise goats and they're like, my dear goats are going to save the world. I'm like, well, I don't know exactly how, but I do know they eat poison ivy and that's a good thing. So um, goats it is. Oh, yeah. oh, does anybody have any any uh, any shop talk questions? Um, someone said that goats eat kudzu too. Oh, amazing! Yep. 
You yeah. don't have to give your brother-in-law a copy of this um, recorded video along with that gift. So oh. <laughs> you can see yes. It. Yeah, so you can see you make yeah, it. Yeah, it can be part of their fundraiser was watch the watch the, the bowl how it got made. That'd be hilarious. Um any other questions? Any did everybody, did everybody bring their uh, favorite um, beverage, Saturday night beverage? I'm going to go get a Saturday night beverage. I'm going to turn my, I have this, I'm going to turn my this over to here. I'm going to show you all. Um, also, this is one of the things I love to make. Look at that. It's for butter and it's got a bunny in it, a bunny and a deer. Um, because again, celebrating the butter moment. And, um, and I, when I teach, I, I'm always running into students who go, I don't want to, I don't have to decorate the bottom. No one's going to look under there. Everyone looks under there. Everyone. Right. You always, I never don't see people turn things over all the time. Half the time they're dumping out my beverage, you know, they're like, Ooh, dump, you know, um, hey, do, do you know what's Juno wants to know how many bowl mold variations do you have? How many bowl mold variations? Right. Like the bowl that I threw in? Yeah. I have about six of each size. So I have small serving bowl, medium, large, and extra large. So I have four of those. And then, um, and then for, I have soup and dessert and right. they're much smaller. Okay. So, you know, and I have, I tend to have about six of each because after about six, after uh, they get, they get soggy and then it's hard to, it's, um, the bowl is going to sit in this, in this mold for, I don't know, a few hours or it could come out in a little while, but it's really wide and, and, and not supported. So it's good to support it. Like right now, this mold is drying it out. The clay is getting dry but like three or four hours. So basically if I fill up all my molds, six times four is 24. Like that's a lot of bowls to finish and decorate with a bunch of stuff. So, you know. Um, and I'm gonna answer a question real quick. So yeah. um, we're gonna be uploading all of the demos and, and studio tours onto the DPI YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Someone asked if they could purchase a copy. So you can go to you can go to the Dallas Pottery Invitational YouTube channel and watch any of the videos that we've been posting um, in our social media and any of these demos. So um, have fun doing that. Do they all have different designs? Um, which the the bowls all have different designs. Yeah. If that's the question, the bowls do. Yeah. And here's, here's some, I'm going to just cram in some stuff to watch for, because I put these over here thinking, oh, you know, we'll get to this or whatever. I have some teapots, and those are fun, and um, some pitchers, and again, I like to make my pitchers in two pots, parts, so you can see that, that a handle would, kind of wants to go nicely there, and pouring, so that'll be, um, that's like, if we had time, we would have assembled that but I talk too much. Um, oh, and I want to show one more thing. So I said that I fire some things upside down. I want to show you what that looks like real fast. If you're still here, I guess that's good. You're interested. Here is I, one of the things that I love. Another huge influence is Mexican pottery. Mexican pottery, especially the stuff called Oaxacan dripware. I grew up in San Antonio and there's a whole bunch of it around in the antique stores and whatnot. And uh, they quit making it in the 60s, but... Um, but it's fired upside down deliberately and it makes these really beautiful drips that go like that because lead glaze loves to do that. It drips evenly. It's gorgeous. It does have a few health problems that it gives. But anyway, I fire upside down and guess what? I invented a special upside down firing Hershey kiss with my welding wire and I put it right there. And I do three of them because otherwise sometimes these things can slip in the kiln and I've had such a problem with that. So um, I, I quit having that problem. Cool. Partially glazed. This is what the uh, sparkling glaze looks like when it's not fired. This is the blue turquoise glaze when it's not fired. It's kind of white looking. This is not glazed at all. And um, 
yeah, so it fires like that in the count. And I, I look for, for all that interesting, beautiful dripping. So it's like little jewels right on the edge when it comes out bright. We have a question. Um, and um, do, you, do you tumble yeah. stack your kiln? Yes. Not, not a ton, but some. Okay, and like here's like here's a drip going out to the edge. Oh, and see, you can see the light shining through. Do you see that? Anyway, it's fun. Um, so yeah. Cool. Well, that's awesome, Lisa. Anything I, else? I actually learned something today. I'm not a oh. I'm not a potter, but that was awesome. I really enjoyed it. And um, thanks for your time to do this. It was super informative. And thanks for everybody that participated. Oh. Yeah. And our sale starts, Thank you. It's our sale starts huh? on April 9th and um, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Lisa's going to have a ton of work. I know, in fact, 64 pieces, I think, in the store for Lisa. So there's going to be over 700 pieces in the store. And, um, you know, go check us out on April 9th. It's opening at 6 p.m. that evening. And um, I... I really love the artists that are picked for this. Like they are artists that only fire a few times a year and make exquisite work that's really rare. And, um, you know, like, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, we are really, really lucky this year. It's an amazing group and it's hard to get their work. So I'm really excited about it. Gonna get my credit card ready, be there. <laughs> okay well thanks again and thanks everybody for participating this was super fun and i i enjoyed it this is my first my first a uh, hosting job for a live demo so that was pretty fun everybody said thank you they really enjoyed it thanks lisa you're awesome love seeing your thank studio. you well it was fun okay goodbye everybody all right bye everybody thanks for coming <laughs>